any shame about Anne. I'm not ashamed of what happened, you know. I see myself as someone who has survived something that many other people don't get the chance to survive. Now I'm kind of beginning to realise that maybe there is something to it, you know. That like I went through all of that for a reason. My story begins in the Kiln Hospital in Dublin, 1973. Second born in a family of five, raised just off Graven Street. That would be like what I refer to as my first life. It was dirt poor. It was like a tour world country. Everyone was leaving, you know, so like there was a massive brain drain. So you were basically left with like a lot of averages. So like, if you were in any way intelligent, you thought you were a king when you were on the place, you know? <laughs> My dad was uh, a stagehand. He worked in RTA and the Gate Theatre. Mad alcoholic. Oh, that's just the way it is. That's, that was a Dublin back then. That's how everyone was brought up. Everyone's outfit was an alcohol. Everyone's outfit bet them around the place. And then my ma, salt of the earth legend. Been through a lot of shit. Dublin now are a different level, I think. kind of hard to put like a time on it, you know? I know it was around the time that like I was going to the Cubs and the youth club that they had there. It was definitely around that time. Now that I look back on it, it may have been orchestrated by those people, you know? That like there was a, a, a ring and you may have been getting passed around to the ring without having any knowledge of it, you wouldn't know any better. They've got like three or four occasions where like, I know I was abused, and these come back to me in nightmares. If I really go deep, there's like a ton more stuff in there. That child is dead, you know? Gone. We can't ever be that child again. So I may as well have put her in the ground. Heroin is like getting a hug off your favourite nanny. <laughs> I think I became a heroin addict because I tried to not be an alcoholic so much. Your dad drinking his drink, yeah. like the usual. You've been a pretty professional at something, fair play to him. Yeah. You know, yeah. If you're going to do something, don't do it with us. Mm. You know, I tried so hard not to be like my dad that I just like, everything else is okay. Just don't go near the alcohol stuff, you know? Um, Fooling myself, really. I fell in love with you the first time you were born. <laughs> like, I think heroin, in, in many ways, saved me, you know? Because it was either, like, addiction or suicide. Heroin was the drug then, like, that was the hint. That's like, Dublin was flooded with heroin. Everyone was taking it. Everyone, 14, 14 year olds, all the way right up, you know. I've always kind of been like a lone wolf, to be honest with you, you know. Like I never really like went out with a crew of people robbing around, like go out and do my own shit, you know. Why should you share your money with someone else? Really, if I can do the job on my own, I don't need anyone else that can potentially harass me to the police and then have to split the money with. Or they could be ripping you off. It's a very greedy cunt, you know. It's almost like watching a film of somebody else. So like you deal with that way and then when you realise that it's you in the film, then you start attaching trauma to it. So maybe 20 years I've just condensed into this like tiny little ball. It doesn't feel that long when I look back on it. I think I hit rock bottom on methadone rather than on heroin, you know? I think methadone fucked me up more than heroin did. I changed my drug dealer. I took my cash out of the local economy and put it into Big Pharma. I'd given up on life, you know? I'd lie on the sofa all day, every day, smoking loads of weed. Like, I literally wasn't even involved with my own family. I first went on a hepatitis treatment. And it was clear all the way through. 
and then at the very end they give you this like blood test three months later or whatever and that came back that I was still positive. What's your name? Look, it hasn't been successful. How long? I did everything he's asked me to do. This is it. This is it. What's your name? Another one. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, what the fuck am I supposed to do? And that like completely crushed me, you know, like for years. And then I got the chance to take this new treatment. And I was I was wary of, of taking it, you know, I was saying like can I can I handle another bleeding big loss like that, you know what I mean? Mentally. And then I realised that I'd already given up, so like try it, see what happens, you know what I mean? And then that worked. Then you can start with like, okay, can I get a little bit fit on now? Can I like do something with myself, you know? Get your shit together or die, one or the other. That's basically the proposition that I was given, you know? My first martial arts class was Jiu Jitsu. You have to replace something with something else. You can't like just have nothing. And Jiu Jitsu was definitely the tool I was using to get off it. I've always loved the UFC, I've always loved grappling. Like, I got the kids into it because I, I wanted to do it, but I wasn't capable at the time of doing it, you know? Because I was sick. My kids are Gary and Darren, two great kids, bro, to be honest with you. Very, very lucky how they've turned out. My two sons and my two heroes, you know. Two annoying little bastards, but like, that's the way it is with kids, isn't it, you know? I caught like really big amounts of methadone over a short period of time. So like from November to Christmas, I got off 100 mils down to nothing. And like Christmas morning was my present to myself. That was like, I'm gonna wake up now and I'm not gonna take anything. Exciting and terrifying at the same time, you know. Then I went up and did rounds in D24 that day, dying sick to bits. Jiu Jitsu was just a different level in the world. Once you change partners, you don't know what's going to happen there, you don't know what game they're playing, and everyone's evolving all the time, so like, it's real, you know, it's real. You know, I remember on that day going into the dressing rooms after like doing rounds and like crying. But I was so high from the Jiu Jitsu, you know. I was, like I cried my eyes out. I'm one of those people that fully realizes I could like fall over there and die. You know, just like we don't know that thinking of that's the folly of man thinking, oh, I've got 40 years left, I've got 40 years left, and you put things off then, and then you realise you've got, like, one year left. It's like, where the fuck did all those years go to? You know, I've, I've wasted enough years to know that you can waste a lot of years. The little child really awoke in me, you know? So, like, I'm, I'm, I keep more like that kid than I do, like, do I go, you know? That it was Mark. Then it was Grousey. Then it was Goose. And Goose strangled Grousey. Yeah, I don't know. I, w I wouldn't tell anyone to like try and follow me or to do what I've done, you know, or like to look at me for any inspiration. Look inside yourself. Everyone has a hero deep down in them, you know. Be your own hero, you know. Everyone else is a false god. <laughs>